Good Sunday afternoon, everybody. Come on in. It's time for Sunday dinner. Now, today I'm going to do something a little bit unusual. I think I can call it unusual. Okay. As you can see, I've got a skillet here that has olive oil in it. I have a pork loin that I'm going to cook on top of the stove again. So, I've done this one for you all before, but I want it again today. Got a taste for it. So, I've already seasoned up my pork tenderloin with onion powder, garlic powder, and I've got some Indian barbecue spices that I had in the cabinet. It's got to have a little bit of that left. So I threw a little curry powder on it as well. So I had this nice tenderloin. It's in two pieces. I got it all seasoned up. So what I'm going to do like I did the last time, I'm just going to put it right here in my trusty skillet. I do trust that you all are having a God-blessed Sunday afternoon and that you've got something in mind for dinner today. Okay, and I did say that I was going to do something a little bit unusual. I'm going to be cooking basically two separate meals, but it's going to be all one meal when I get done with it. So I'm cooking this first meal I'm doing because I'm trying to prepare a meal for somebody that's got to get on the road. So I chose to do a pork tenderloin, some cabbage, and some rice. It's real simple, so we should be done with that in about 45 minutes. So there goes the pork tenderloin. It's on there. It's cooking. Hopefully it'll be uh, done in time for them to uh, at least be able to take something with them. Okay, so I kind of got a late start, but nonetheless, I started. So I'm going to probably put some onions around there in a few minutes. Once I turn it over, I'll do the onions, cover it, and let it continue to cook. I'm going to go ahead and get my cabbage going. I already got some rice done, so I can do, I don't have to cook the rice because I've got some left from last night when I did the gumbo. So I hope you all have a God-blessed uh, Sunday. Hope you all have been continuing to pray with that season. Hope you all are still especially praying for our sisters and brothers down Florida way and up that coast that all is well with them. So hold on just a second and I shall return. Okay, I've turned that pork on. So what I'm going to do now, uh, excuse me just a sec. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and put in my onions and I'll do some uh, pepper, some uh, orange uh, grilled peppers I'm going to put in. Um, just going to season them up just a little bit. Let's see what we're going to season it with. Okay. Um, You can do salt and pepper if you got, you know, if you, you, you know, if you sparingly, sparingly y'all using uh, some um, complete seasoning, whatever seasoning you use, just put a little sprinkle of uh, seasoning onto the onions. I'm just going to start putting them around the pan like so and put them on top, put a few on top so that fresh onion flavor will go in. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing with the peppers. Okay. The peppers, same thing with the peppers. Just let them around in there so that flavor will go all the way through that pork. Okay. And we're just going to let it do what it do. And this is our stovetop uh, pork one. It's going to seem just, you're going to think it went right to the oven. Okay, that, that process there is about 15 minutes. It's already been cooking 15. So 30, 35 minutes this pork one will be done. We're going to have it on. Uh, low heat and just let it cook. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do, I've got my cabbage over there. It's all the way on the other side. Yeah, there's my cabbage pot. I had some, um, a few ham shavings that I've started to boil and just to get that flavor to go in through that water. I'm going to put me a little bit more water in there. I'm, you know, 
I stir fry the cabbage usually. Today, I'm gonna steam these cabbage. So, with cabbage, all you gotta do is wash them, cut them up real good, and you're either gonna put them in a pan with some um, hot oil and put the seasoning on and let them just stir fry, just fried cabbage. But today, we're gonna steam these. So, um, again, let's see. And I usually use smoked turkey, or if I if I had a ham or something like that, I'll put um, ham skin in there. This is a piece of ham skin, not a lot. Uh, and I'm gonna let that boil some more. I had it boil, but it need to boil some more. And I'm gonna put those cabbage in there, and um, put my seasonings on. And we're gonna have us a pot of old fashioned cabbage today. And I said that's that's the newfangled way to do it, and there's the old fangled way. When we grew up, we grew up. You know, with cabbage being cooked, excuse me, cabbage being cooked uh, in a boil or like this with the seasons on with it. And Lord, cabbage with fat back to me was my favorite thing in the world. Uh, I didn't feel much about the ham hocks, and I just like the fat back in that cabbage. So I haven't used fat back in a few years, but that's one of the things that made it taste good. But we have to watch our health a little bit better these days. So here goes uh, with the cabbage. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let that come to a rolling boil, and then I'm going to drop my cabbage in, and we'll have some cabbage. We'll be back shortly. And, um, okay, the other thing that I'm preparing today is um, Quran likes, uh, we got that upside down. Quran loves lamb chops, so we're going to do him some, we're going to do some lamb. He brought them by here, want me to cook them, so we're going to cook lamb chops. And I'm going to uh, cook my mesquite chicken, and I'm going to be making my my version of Alice Spring chicken, y'all. So when we get back ready to do that, I will be right back. Okay, I got my cabbage water boiling. I, I went ahead and seasoned it up with onion powder, garlic powder, some brown sugar, and a couple tablespoons of vinegar. Mix that all up. These, we're going to let these cabbage cook down into all of that goodness and when they come out they're going to be really 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 good job and of course y'all know i'm going to drop some olive oil and a little bit of butter in there toward the end so hang on we'll be right back and when we come back i'm just going to go ahead and start dropping these cabbage you know those dark green parts need to go down in there toward the bottom Ooh, and let them start to cook you know how you chop the green we have a, and this is a, a nice hard Cabbage, and th that's what I was gonna say to you too. That's why I came back to talk. Um, cabbage, when you purchase them, if you like those nice little green leaves in there, you're gonna have to get what you call a hard-headed cabbage. And when you know you got a hard-headed cabbage, and you pick it up, that cabbage is sort of uh, heavy, and you know that's a good hard, firm cabbage that's real lightweight. You don't have a lot of substance on the inside of it, so just get those green leaves going in there first and then let them cook for a minute or two and then you know what I, and then the, the white part of the cat that part of the cat you can cook those next so when you see these babies again they're gonna be ready to eat y'all so hang tight okay y'all i'm back it's time to get the lamb chops going i got my um i didn't let y'all see me fry some bacon because i got so many things going on here today but i fried up some turkey bacon because i'm doing some alice spring chicken so I fried my bacon in the skillet, and I'm going to use the same skillet because I got the good old uh, drippings in the bottom of this pan. I'm going to now put these uh, lamb chops in. So we're doing lamb chops. I like to do my lamb chops on top of the stove in the skillet. So we're going to drop them in like so. And these are kind of thick, so they're going to have to cook for a few minutes. And again, my family don't like nothing pink in the middle, so these are gonna cook. You're gonna cook them till they start singing "Bye Bye Black Sheep." Cause honey, they want them done all the way. So we, I think I got room for all of them, and we're gonna cook them on medium high heat. Cause I don't, I don't want any uh, juice to form in there. I just want it to, uh, I want it just to cook. And when we get that done, I'm going to start on my Alice Spring, my version of Alice Spring chicken. Okay. So, we got 12 lamb chops going on. I was just going to do the um, Alice Spring and the, the pork roast, but the long time they asked me about these lamb chops, so they were easy enough to do, so we're doing lamb chops too. 
How many plants is that? How many what? How many plants? Three. Okay, now, so those are cooking real good now. And we're just going to let them cook like that on each side for about six or seven minutes. They should be ready to come out. Um, I've got a nice and seasoned up onion powder, garlic powder. Uh, I've got some uh, Indian seasoning called, it's really barbecue spices, but I don't know. It really has a good taste to it to me. But um, we're going to just let those cook just so, just like that. And now we're going to move on over here to... I've got these mesquite chicken breasts laid out on the pan. And what I'm going to do with them, I'm going to put some uh, mushrooms, bacon, cheese, and a honey mustard sauce on them. And they're going to go into an oven at 375 degrees for about 35 minutes. And they should be ready. So the chicken is already done. The bacon is done. So it's a matter of melting the cheese and letting that uh, honey mustard sauce sort of soak in. So, um... I made the honey mustard sauce with uh, half a cup of just yellow mustard, um, half a cup of sugar, brown or white, and a fourth of a cup of mayonnaise and a little bit of allspice. And just mix it up real good. Run it through the microwave for about, eh, about three minutes just to let it blend. And now I'm going to take it and smooth it over the uh, chicken. And like I said, we're going to let it bake in the oven for about... Uh, 35 minutes so hold on and I'll be right back okay y'all I'm back it's time to get this Alice Spring chick my version of Alice Spring chicken first we're gonna start out this is my honey mustard sauce this is uh the mustard mayo sugar make sure I'm gonna start out with some of that right on top of these babies about a tablespoon to start with put on each one Okay. You know, I love Alice Spring chicken, and uh, I don't go out to eat that much, so I kind of saw the last time I had, I, uh, well, a long time ago, actually. I learned how to make my version, and family seemed like they like it pretty well, so I sort of run with uh, my little recipe of it. There is a recipe, by the way, online. Um, I can't remember what I was in it, but anyway, I just made it my own a long time ago. I didn't even realize that they had put the recipe out there, but it's out there online. It's called Alice Spring Chicken, and Outback uh, makes it, so. But you know, since uh, all the pandemic or whatever, people just don't go out no more like they used to, at least I don't. Well, I mean, they started back, but I'm just not a go-out eater. So this is how you do it. You start with that. And then next I'm going to go in with, um, I think I'm going to go ahead with my cheese. Normally I would have some grated cheese on here, but since I did, we're going to go with these um, pieces of, uh, this is, um, I forgot the name of the cheese, y'all. Help me, help me, help me. Um, I, 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 you know what cheese I got on my mind is monster, but it's not monster cheese. Monterey mm. Jack. Not Monterey Jack. It's, um, mm, I don't want a whole piece on there either. I think that'll be a little bit much. It is called Swiss. Good grief. <laughs> That's Tansy on the phone, quiet on the set. <laughs> yeah, she on the phone, honey. But that's fine. She's okay. She ain't gonna be here for. Uh, she don't get off till later on tonight, so I have to talk to her at times while she's get on her break at work. So we're gonna. Uh, let's see. Okay, I think that's enough cheese. Now I got a little bit of grated cheese that I'm going to put on there, and I think I'm gonna save it to last to sort of put on. Um. Next, I'm going to put on some bacon. I got some bacon to put on there. I got a strip of bacon for each um, piece of chicken. These pieces of chicken are pretty big. So I've got nine of these. Okay, and then uh, then I'll go on with some mushrooms. Let's go on with that and then in the interest of time so I don't have to uh, keep the computer rolling. So we're going to spread these mushrooms out on here like so. 
Okay. Sort of like that. And then the last thing I'll put on there, I'll go back with some more of the, a uh, little bit more of that. A little bit more, a little bit more. And then like I can say I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of, because uh, I don't have a little bit. That's why I'm sprinkling a little bit. A little bit of cheese, a little bit of some grated cheese on there. Just a little bit to garnish. So there we go. So I'll get the rest of these done. And when y'all see these babies again, they'll be ready to sit down and eat. So you hang tight and I'll be back. Okay, y'all, everything is ready. Into the oven now, 375 for about 35 minutes. We'll see you shortly. Okay, y'all, there they are. The lamb chops are ready to come out of my skillet. I'm getting ready to transfer them over here to my nice little red bowl. So the lamb chops are ready. We're just going to get them all over here. I cooked in my good old olive oil. I'm going to leave as much of that olive oil on as I can because that will keep them nice and um, more. So I've got, what did I tell you? I had 12 here. Yeah, i got 12 lamb chops. You know, there's, these lamb chops are relatively small, so you have to cook enough of them so you can get your feel of them. Okay. So there we go. Lamb chops are ready. We'll be back. Okay, everything is ready, y'all. Dinner is served. Lamb chops, Alice Spring chicken over rice, uh, pork loin, and cabbage. Man, we get ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy this meal. Thank y'all for tuning in. Now, thank you for your well wishes, your comments, and your compliments. Until I decide to cook again, keep on praying. Keep those prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down. And most of all, please pray without ceasing. Love you guys. Toodles.